Okay, so now that we have configured the vCenter server appliance itself, uh, I've went ahead and I've logged into my vSphere web client. And as you see, I've already built out some environments with uh, two clusters, some hosts, a couple of VMs. Uh, but I wanted to show you real quick as well as to how to go ahead and do a few other steps that is needed such as adding the vCenter server to the Active Directory domain. So what we need to do is we need to go to Home, and then we can go into Administration here. Now, as you see in within Administration, uh, you have your roles here under Access Control, which these are your default roles. You can also create new ones. You have your Global Permissions, and we can get rid of that because I don't like to see that. So here's your global permissions. Then for single sign-on, you have your users and groups. Now we haven't uh, connected to an Active Directory domain yet. So right now we just have our administrator at vSphere.local and then of course the, uh, the built-in accounts that vCenter uses. Then we have the configuration. Here we have policies. So here we can go into the password policy. Um, I've gone ahead and I've already set it um, to where the maximum lifetime of the password, so I don't have to worry about changing. It can uh, use the same password for a long time because this is a demo environment. You can adjust the maximum length, minimum length, and such here. Also for your password, the requirements, how many special characters, uppercase, lowercase, numeric, you can all change how many uh, consecutive or adjacent uh, characters as well. So you can adjust those. Your lockout policy as well. So in the chance of putting in a password incorrectly, you can go ahead, uh, as you see, the maximum number of failed attempts, uh, how long the interval is between failures, and the unlock time I changed to 100 instead of 300 seconds. Token policy you can change to, nothing really do there. Um, and then you have identity sources. Now we are adding Active Directory and Active Directory is identity source, but back, I can't remember at which revision of the vCenter server appliance, I think it might've been 6.0, where it used to come in here and you this is where you'd add the Active Directory domain. However, now there is um, one other place you have to go first. And I always forget that initially. And I try to do it here and then it tells me I have to go to the other spot. So, uh, down here real quick under licensing, of course, we have the licensing for the vCenter server. I have that already uh, for the different products and assets. Any reporting. We have for solutions, you have the client plugins. Obviously you have some plugins that are there automatically. Your vCenter server extensions. So these are your default extensions. But more importantly here, we want to go to System Configuration. And then we want to click on Nodes. And then we click on the vCenter server itself. Okay. And we do want to go to the Manage and then Settings. And then you're going to see here Active Directory. And this is where we're going to join the Active Directory. Okay. So here we have Active Directory. And so we'll, in order to join the vCenter server appliance to Active Directory, we're going to go ahead and click Join here. We're going to go in, put our domain name in. Now you can put the path to the organizational unit where your administrator account is that you're going to be using as your administrative login username password here. But it's just easier just to leave it blank. Um, you're going to have more problems if you try to actually put that path in. So I would just leave it blank. So I'm going to put in my credentials here for my Active Directory Administrator account, and then click OK. OK, so as you see here, it might be a little confusing at first, but we went ahead, you know, I put in the domain name, I put in my administrator at domainname.com or .net rather, I put in the password, click OK, and you see nothing really happened. Doesn't look like it joined the domain like it used to. Well, it doesn't actually reflect that you have joined the domain. As long as you did not get an error, then you are good to go. And at this point, what you need to do is to reboot your Virtual Center appliance to continue on and finish off uh, to fully get it onto the domain. And then we will also add in 
the Active Directory as a single sign-on identity source as well. So that'll be the follow-up step. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it while I reboot the vCenter server uh, appliance, and we'll continue on from there. Okay. So I went ahead and I rebooted the vCenter server appliance as I said we needed to do. And I'm back in here now. So let's go back to the administration section and we can go from the home to administration this way. Again, there's more than one way to get to more than one place in here. Go back to system configuration, click on nodes, click on the vCenter server. And then as you see, we're back here at the Active Directory. You now see that it's actually a member of the eaglesclaw.net domain. So as I said, keep in mind that although when you initially join, it doesn't reflect that until you actually reboot. Now, although it is on the Active Directory domain now from a single sign-on perspective, as far as using Active Directory credentials to actually log into your vCenter server, what we need to do now is go back to the administration page and we can either go back here and then under single sign-on, we're going to go to configuration. Okay, so now we're on configuration and we're going to go ahead and add Active Directory as an identity source. So we're going to go ahead and click the green plus sign. Now, the easiest as far as putting in information to do is this Active Directory with integrated Windows authentication, but this sometimes doesn't work too well and it has troubles uh, pulling in all the users and groups from Active Directory. So a little more preferred method is the Active Directory using LDAP server. So I'm going to select that and click next. And this is going to be eaglesclaw.net. I'm going to put for the name. Now obviously that's also the domain name there. For the domain name alias, you're going to do more like the NetBIOS name. Now, the base DN for users and groups, I'm going to just do it at the root of the the root of Active Directory, and so I'm going to put equals claw, and then DC. Oops, let me get rid of the space there. DC equals net, and I'm going to do that for both the users and groups. That's just the quickest and easiest way to do it. So it looks at every single OU structure in the entire Active Directory structure. And then the username. And you want to make sure that you use this format, or otherwise it won't work. I'm going to do it to where it connects to any domain controller in the domain. Now, if you have multiple sites geographically across the world, uh, you may want to go ahead and connect to a specified uh, domain controller. But for my particular case here with only having the one, I'm just going to leave it on that. And then you can also do uh, secure LDAP communication, but you will need a valid certificate for that. And I'm not using certifi a certificate authority, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that unchecked. And I'm going to click Next. And then this is going to give you a summary screen here. And I'm going to click finish. Okay, so as you see, uh, eaglesclaw.net now shows up. Again, if we wanted to make that as a default so that people are um, defaulting to using the Active Directory domain to log in to vCenter, you can do that by simply clicking on that domain and then setting it as default by clicking this icon here. Now we can go ahead and we can set up permissions such as uh, let's go to groups and so your vCenter administrators. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add additional group membership. So vSphere.local is what it comes to automatically, but I want to go ahead and bring in some of the groups from Active Directory. So I'm going to change this uh, just so it finds a little quicker to groups and I'm going to type in domain. Okay, so domain admins, double click on that. It adds it down there. Click OK. And now all of my eaglesclaw.net domain administrators are now administrators within vCenter. So you can go and you can do your permissions how are appropriate and uh, if it's a production environment, solution users, however you want to do it. If you just want people to have maybe view only rights, you can set up your permissions and groups however is best for you. That's how you connect vCenter server to Active Directory to join the domain and then add Active Directory as a identity source for single sign-on and then go ahead and add your Active Directory users or groups to the appropriate groups or solution user sets that is appropriate for your environment. 
So one additional thing I'd like to talk about is the new capability of having vCenter server high availability. Now this is only for the vCenter server appliance version 6.5. If you deploy vCenter server 6.5 on a Windows server instead of using the appliance, this uh, high availability feature is not available. It is only for the appliance. So as you see here, if you click on the vCenter server, uh, on the top left hand side in the navigator pane and then go to the configure tab and then down below settings to vCenter HA, you're gonna see there's a configure button. This is where you're going to configure to set up another instance uh, along with a witness of the vCenter server appliance. And there are some requirements for this such as having a high availability network VM kernel port group created for that in order to uh, keep the communication between the HA appliances, the vCenter server appliances, that heartbeat going back and forth to keep them updated. Now, because my environment, I deployed vCenter server appliance 6.5 in the tiny configuration, which is the smallest possible, it does not allow me to configure the uh, vCenter HA with the tiny configuration. So uh, just as a note, I did want to show you where that is available. Uh, however, obviously I can't go ahead and deploy that and show it to you because I am not able to having the tiny vCenter appliance deployment. So what I'm doing is you'll see here is the link to a YouTube video where another individual has created a video on how to set up and configure vCenter Server 6.5 high availability. So I just wanted to give you the link to that so you could watch that as well as there are several uh, documents out there for deploying vCenter server appliance as well as also links to a document for setting up and configure vCenter server appliance 6.5 high availability. So there's plenty of resources out there. It's pretty straightforward. And because vCenter Server 6.5 and the high availability feature is fairly new, there's not a lot of videos out there and not a lot of content. But in the next couple of months, you're going to start to see that there'll be much more content out there. So that completes the series of videos where I have deployed the vCenter Server Appliance 6.5. And I have gone and configured the appliance itself and then gone into vCenter server and showed you how to add it to the Active Directory domain, how to add the Active Directory as a identity source for single sign-on. So there's much more that could be shown in here, obviously. Uh, also, for example, the new feature that Update Manager is now included within the appliance itself. It gets automatically deployed in the vCenter server appliance. But again, I'm just, this is just a basic install, deploy, and configuration of vCenter Server Appliance 6.5. So hopefully this information will be helpful to you so that you can go ahead and deploy your own instance of the vCenter Server Appliance 6.5 and do the initial configuration. And then of course, there's plenty of other resources that you can look at, uh, VMware documents, YouTube videos from VMware, as well as also third-party individuals such as myself that have enablement videos on how to configure the different aspects, such as networking, update manager, the high availability, as we just discussed. So again, thank you for joining me today, and I hope this was helpful in you learning how to deploy, install, and configure the vCenter Server Appliance version 6.5. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.